Brands don't get big without first creating a connection, a big idea, a feeling which inspires both products and consumers. Today on Style Innovators, we'll hang with the husband and wife team who are the brand, Kate and Andy Spade. Andy Spade and Kate Spade, this very dynamic couple, Kate Spade launched her bag line, which became hugely successful. An equal creative force behind the label was her husband Andy, who was creative director and CEO of the brand. Andy then launched Jack Spade, his men's line, which we guys at GQ love. Andy now is running a extremely successful creative agency, which does branding and advertising. I'm driving out to meet Andy right now in Southampton. If you've never been to the Hamptons before, it's beautiful, cool little towns, insanely beautiful beaches, amazing houses. You know, I've known Andy over the years from writing about Jack Spade, but you know, I've never hung out with him when he's downshifting and relaxing. So I'm kind of psyched to see that side of Andy. Mr. Spade, how are you? I'm, I'm well. Good. On, welcome. Man. Welcome. How are you Not doing? Much. Not much. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Can I get you a drink or something? Uh, I will take a drink. Andy has spent his career refining his own unique sense of taste. One part Americana, one part nostalgia, one part subtly subversive. It's all on full display at his and Kate's Southampton house, a former art school run by the turn of the century impressionist, William Merritt Chase. Want to come in? Yeah, yeah let's, let's check out the house. This studio was the original building on the property when William Mayor Chase was putting on the school program here. The stage, as you can see, is still intact. We contemplated taking it out and opening up the back of the house, but we wanted to keep the integrity of the original studio. When was he teaching and when was he living here and, and, and painting here? It started in the 1880s. The other part of the house actually was added on later in the 1920s, and it was a part of a dormitory. This summer, because we were traveling, we actually gave the house to a group of artists who were here and actually doing classes as oh, wow. William Mayor Chase did. So while they stay here and they have the classes, you can see these are some of the drawings. This is a uh, rendering of our house actually made out of uh, root beer candy canes. Root beer can deal. Exactly. This is called a ghost ship. An artist named Robert Hawkins who grew up in the 70s and 80s, he would go to the model hobby shop, buy a ship, and then distress it. The glass he broke intentionally. He burned out the center, distressed the sails. They're doing this with clothing for years. Yeah. You know, they're distressing the, the denim and distressing all these different washes. He just happened to do it on a ship. I didn't have it when I was at Jack. It probably would have ended up in the Jack store, but it wasn't there at the time. What about the art on the wall? This is part of a collection that I've, I've had for years. Some work that's not important at all, some other work that's actually by artists that are renowned. This, for example, which I love, this Pilgrim is from Kansas City, Missouri. It's a third grader painting, and it looks like a Donald Bachelor. You don't necessarily know which, which the high is and which the No, you wouldn't know. But it, the room just lent itself so well to kind of doing something with this. You got a pool out there. We have a pool. Let's check it out. You use the surfboard or the surfboard there just for long? It's a longboard. I can't shortboard anymore, so I occasionally will go out longboarding. You grew up skateboarding, right? I grew up skateboarding. I grew up in Arizona, spent the summers in Southern California surfing and skating. Were you good? A good skate. I was a very good skateboarder. I was on a team in Arizona. They were called the Sidewalk Surfers. We were sponsored by the local skateboard shop, and we traveled around the country and mostly on the West Coast, you know, in all those little little competitions yeah. that they had in the skate park. So I did it every day. I mean, I, I skipped classes to skateboard. I had terrible grades. I didn't know what I was doing, but I had a great time skateboarding. We got the awesome studio space. We've got the pool. What's your other favorite room in the house? My favorite room is a watercolor studio. I don't think this originally was part of the house. It was probably added between 1900 and 1910. And this, from, from, the, from the books and what people have said, is just this is where they would paint their watercolors. And Kate just loves coming into this room just because of its light. 
Is this stressful taking a, on a house this big, or is it fun and making it look like how you want to look? It's fun. I mean, I really like doing it. I mean, it's one of the things that I've enjoyed working with Kate at Kate Spade. We designed showrooms, we designed stores, we designed our own apartment in New York City. What about all the furniture? Did you have to go hunting for the furniture? We just find things we like and then figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I would find pieces of furniture I, I liked, and I would put it in storage until we moved in. And we'll repaint and reupholster and change things you know, based on what we want to do with them. We had the cushions that were, were original here reupholstered. So these have been reupholstered, yeah, because they were old 70s, 70s kind of designs. When I worked at Jack and Kate, I started learning about you know, manufacturing, about making products and working with different fabrics. So you're working with leather, then you're working with nylon, then you're working with burlap. So you learn the process and you apply kind of the same ideas to what you're doing where, at home. Where do you think you got that interest from? I think it was when I was skateboarding. The thing about skateboarding, you have your own kind of style because you start getting your own vans customized. I mean, that was something other kids yeah. didn't do, but you could call up van and I would pick different colors for the van shoe for skateboarding. Quicksilver would also customize your, your shorts for you to get called up to the factory and make them all. What about your brother, David Spade? Did, did he get any of your style bug or is he just Mr. Entertainer guy? He didn't. I mean, <laughs> like my wife will tell you he didn't. And he, he, came, he, he presented a CFDA award to my wife back in the um, 90s and he wore a um, light blue Levi's cords and light blue Lacoste shirt with a, like a light blue belt or something and he said, how does this not work? And I said, you don't understand that, I can't tell you. You can't, you can't. If you need to ask. Is there anything else we need to see in the house, cool wise, that you want to point uh, out? The only other thing I, I was thinking was nice is just this little back patio here I can walk you out and show it yeah. to you. Do you cook at all while you're out here or grill? I'll grill. Have you had a chance to have a full-on housewarming party yet? No. Invite everyone over? No, it's, it's actually too early. We're really not, not in completely. So we should, we should come back next year. We should come back next <laughs> year. It's really not, not ready yet. So for not ready, it's looking pretty all right. So I'm going to meet you back in the city then. Yes. And we're going to see Partners in Spade and the Spade residents in town. Yeah, I look forward to it. He'd like it to look a little more like the Munsters, yes. all Munsters. ripped up. And I don't mind it looking casual because I like that. I'm Not the Munsters. <laughs> Pretty close.